bless you. Hey, welcome to uh, the noon and evening Wednesday Bible study. Praise God. I pray my first prayer is that you voted yesterday uh, on that Tuesday of that life-changing vote. Uh, praise God. But our trust is in the Lord, and so let us stick with the word of God today. And we thank God for the revelation. Uh, we're going to talk about coming out of oppression, getting into the promised land, and really receiving all what the promise has for us, the rest of God, R-E-S-T, the rest of God. When God rested, um, he had fulfilled everything, and we need to get into the rest of God, the fulfillment of God, the completion of God. Many people have not made it to the rest of God where we can be blessed in the Lord. Well, we're going to start uh, today in Hebrews, um, what I call Hebrews, um, Lord, thank you for that. Hebrews, the seventh, the sixth chapter and the 13th verse. And we're going to walk back to Romans, um, the seventh chapter, and then get in Deuteronomy 28 and Deuteronomy the fifth. And so uh, let's start with Hebrews, the seven and 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. God was going to make good on his word. Uh, he made a promise to Abraham, who is the father of the faithful. Uh, uh, we are descendants. We're heir to his blessings because of his faith in God. And God made a promise to him. And God says, I can't find nobody greater to swear by than myself. In other words, uh, I'm all existing and my word is all existing. Before my word fell, heaven and earth will pass away. God will make good on his word. Don't you agree? Praise God. And so uh, Romans um, 7 and 7 uh, talks about when God left Abraham, he got in our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we got into the lawgiver Moses. And a lot of people say, we don't live under the law, we live under grace. But the law helped us to understand grace. And Romans 7 and 7 says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Uh, Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covenant. He says, in other words, Paul says, the law uh, brought the revelation for it, made me understand what I was doing wrong, and uh, brought that to my attention. And so the law is not bad. Uh, the law is written for sinners, as Timothy writes, a student of Paul. Um, but Paul was saying, God forbid, uh, let's understand the law. And so we're going to go back and look at the law and see how do we get into this rest of God or this abundance blessing that many of us are tattooing on our arms, are blessed in the city, are blessed in the field. Uh, many of us says the, the text without even understanding the content of the text. And so let, let us go to that. And I only say that because I see so many people who don't go to church with the tattoo on them. And I'm like, really? And so let, let us go. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, um, I'm going to start at 12 and then I'm going to back back up uh, to the start of that chapter. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now the Lord says some things going to overtake you. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 15. I want to be in 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in its season and his season and to bless all the works of thine hand. Thou shalt not lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. In other words, God was talking about being in a seat of blessing. When you don't have to borrow, you're pretty well off. When the only thing you can do is just lend. When you become the bank. Uh, I love my parents was the bank. Um, 
me and my brother, I would say, Dad, can you give me some money? My brother would always say, Dad, can you loan me some money? And my father would go, I think I'm going to take the loan, even though Steve don't have any type of source of repaying the loan back. Um, but Dad knew he'd given it to me, he hit, didn't have a chance of getting it back. Uh, and, uh, and that was our joke when we was little, so I learned my brother's phrase, Dad, can you loan me some money? Uh, well, I can take Lynn team to the show. And so, uh, praise God, he gave me my first $5 to see the first Star Wars. It cost $2 at the time, and it cost me $4. I still remember that just like yesterday, some 45 years ago. Uh, but the Lord is merciful. Um, it says, and it came to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee up on high above all the nations of the earth. And I guess we should look at all of what commandments? What did Moses say to the people that if they would keep it, God will open his good treasure? I think we need to go all the way back to uh, even the fourth chapter, 31 verse will shine, 13 verse will shine some light on the subject. It says, and he declared, he, that's being Moses, unto his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tablets of stones. Um, uh, Moses is saying to the people of God, God wrote on his, his covenant. He wants to change our position with God. He wanted to bring us into a spiritual relationship. That's all a covenant is. When you get married, you're going into a covenant with a person to have more of a closer relationship, uh, soul, body, and mind. Um, praise God for that. Um, so let's look at the fifth chapter. Now we understand it's the commandments that Moses is talking about. And here in the fifth and the sixth chapter, I pray that you would read it when you get home. Uh, take time. Um, the in-depth of the verses, and we're going to try to share some of them, um, try to cover 10 of them, but expound on about six of them. It says, and Moses called all of Israel, that's five and one, and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments would I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. Three things, hear them, learn them, and keep them. You can hear some stuff and don't know what you're learning. In other words, learn the depth of what's being spoken to you and then keep them. In other words, do them. It says the Lord our God made a covenant with us. Okay, God made this covenant. It wasn't us. It was God invited us up on the mountain and sent Moses down with the Ten Commandments and said give this to the people of God. And what have God's given you to keep and treasure? Uh, Sometimes God can give you a position in the body of Christ and we don't keep it because we hear it, but we don't learn it. We don't enhance our position of what we've been given and we don't perform it to the best of our ability. Praise God. The Lord made not his covenant with our fathers, but with us, uh, the patriarchs before those who came out of Egypt with us. This was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob he was talking about. Uh, those was our fathers, uh, not our fathers that gave birth with us and came into the wilderness with us and died in the wilderness. Not those fathers, no, no. Those that, and he swore by himself type of fathers. God is going to keep his word that he promised Abraham. I want to say some of you are uh, living through other people's blessings and all of us is living through the life of Christ who caused all of us to be blessed, all of the believers in the kingdom. Uh, we thank God for him giving his life. Praise God that we can have it more abundantly. And so now we have a due diligence to carry out the legacy that's been given to us. Jesus has given us a legacy. And it says, for the Lord talked with you face to face in the mount." Uh, out of the midst of the fact God done spoke to you uh, you heard him for yourself and God done dealt with all of us uh, especially everybody who's been saved in their own face to face way God done dealt with your spirit 
dealt with your mind and, and dealing with you right now. And thank God that he fellowship with his people. Praise God. I stood between the Lord and you at that time. This is Moses. To show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire. And went not up into the mountain. Saying. I am the Lord thy God. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. In other words. God is giving his credentials. To the people. And Moses says now y'all remember when he was speaking to us out of that fire. He said I am the Lord thy God. In other words sometimes we forget who God is. In other words uh, he's our deliverer. Uh, he brought us out. Uh, he delivered us. He gave us a peace that when we had no understanding. But he did it. So he's the Lord our God. Uh, who brought us out of our situation. Did the Lord bring you out of something? Just hallelujah. Thank God for bringing us out. He said, thou shall have no other God before me. In other words, God now stood in the position explaining the Ten Commandments. The first one, uh, uh, have no other God before me. God saying, because it's a bad relationship for you to want something else. And I have done all this for you. It says, Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. In other words, God says, everything is beneath me. Uh, don't, don't carve a wolverine and act like it's God. Don't call, carve a sparty and act like it's a God. You hear me, I'm playing on your mascots. Some of us act like that's our God. Uh, you know, we won't miss a game. Uh, we belong and fall out with people. They don't wear our colors. Uh, we promote him everywhere we go sometime. And, but, but we don't have nothing that signifies I've been saved. Uh, but he says, whatever you make down here, on earth, in the air, beneath the earth, in the water, is still beneath him. Don't bring the Holy Spirit down to man's level. Because all of that was God had given us power to have dominion. Remember what he said in Genesis 2 and 16. I've given you power to have dominion and name everything. So if we're going to make God like something we made, that means we can control God. God's like, no, no. Don't get it in, in, in the street language twisted. Help me now. I'm trying to reach you. Don't get it out of order. Keep God who God is. I just read something in the paper and I was like, Lord. And it says, and we thank God we heard his voice. God is not a, not, a, not a female. God is always in the masculine voice. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's a he. Read your Bible. Now, I'm not talking about a Bible that you are conforming to to make it, but I just want to talk about the blasphemy or put down. Uh, I don't want to call a woman a man, and I don't want a woman to call me a woman. I want to be who God made me. And don't change God. We, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, it says, Nine, thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. God says, now when you start worshiping this stuff, now this becomes the problem. Many people, have great commitment and fellowship to stuff that have idols. And they have not concluded in their heart that it's their God. I'm telling you, I, I wrestle with it so often when I ask people, please don't come to church uh, with your basic stuff, fraternities and sororities familiar. Leave that outside of the sanctuary. This is the house of God. Your rabbit, your... Uh, uh, Elephant, your uh, your dog, um, your sphinx, uh, none of that has a place here in the house of God. And it saddens me when people come in and have their private clubs that they have a ritual to get into. This is the house of God, salvation. Uh, come by with no money, uh, drink, ha have nothing to offer, but God got everything. This is not an exclusive club. This is a saved body. This is an organism. I, I want you to hear me now. Uh, you, 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 you don't believe me? Uh, take your family. Have your children come home, and their last name is Johnson, and they keep walking in the house with a Heinz 
our name on back of his shirt into the Johnson home. That would be offensive to the, the leader of the house. I wish somebody helped me. And that's the same way with God is. He's a jealous God. What do you don't understand about jealousy? You know how when somebody jealous, they read into stuff that ain't even there. Why are you looking at them? Who, what he's saying to you, that's a jealous person. God said, I'm jealous. And so we, he wants us to be very careful about our association and our loyalty to other things. I tell people, people travel all over this country just to get into meetings and the fellowships. And they know their dates, they know their itinerary, they have their new name. Why do you think you get new names when you pledge? Squeaky. Help me somebody. Uh, those are names like, I've been born again. Uh, help me somebody. What are you talking about crossing the burning sands? Did, did you hear me? Re read, your, read your scripture and see what that means. Help me. Got gods called Almighty Zeus. Those are Greek gods. That's why you call it Greek fraternity. Wake up out there. Come out of this deadness and sleepness and denounce this of this blasphemy and go with God. People know they codes of their book and don't know their Bible. They'll tell you the rule and parliamentary procedure and don't even know the books of the Bible. If, if you know the girl you like phone number and don't know your wife or your girlfriend phone number, I think that's a problem. Uh, help me somebody. Somebody going to agree with me out there. And I'm trying to save you and wherever you at, God's grace is still good enough to cover you. I'm not talking out of something I uh, uh, heard. I'm talking about something I've experienced and lived. Boys still going around as men doing what boys do. It'd be a sad day when the pastor in the pulpit put on a Greek shirt or Greek color and stand up and want another fraternity to come in under his watch to be saved. Hear me what I'm saying, huh? Do, do what's right. Honor the Lord thy God in everything you do. Work as unto the Lord. Sometimes we get our work mixed up with other stuff. I'm not feeding the hungry on the we are the world. I'm feeding the hungry through the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me. Look what he says. He will pass the curse to the third and fourth generation, and he said something real powerful, of them that hate me. Many people don't even think they hate him. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew when he said this. You cannot serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other. Many of us have to wake up and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've been sh showing you that I hate you. Now, I'm not even talking about fraternity. I'm talking about them that's crazy about their job. that brag about, I never missed a day of work. I've never been sick. And won't go to church. Help me, somebody. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Praise God for his mercy. He, he, he shows it to thousands of them that love him. Now, his whole relationship was about hate and love. Those only two things. He said, those that keep my commandments love me. Those that don't hate me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's my earlier point. Usually when we think of taking the Lord's name in vain, uh, we think about cussing. But it's broader than that. It's like uh, I, was, I was so proud of my voting station this morning. Yes, I voted, but this is the revelation. When I was leaving, one of the workers started picking up signs. Now, my voting booth is at church, Cascade Baptist Church. I'm in Ward 6. And they had all of these signs, vote, and some of them was my candidates. And all the candidates, the lady started picking up the signs and says, this is the city property. We cannot be caught promoting a candidate. And I says, this is the church property, and I would pray that the church wouldn't promote a candidate using the Lord in vain. You know how people go, well, I swear by Jesus that uh, I've been doing right. And no, they're still, and they're taking God in vain 
to make them look good. God's only to be used for his purpose, not our purpose. I, 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 I feel less than a leader to stand up and say, vote for my daughter or my son, Joseph, because we are Christians. And no, 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 no. Don't, don't use the Lord's in vain. Uh, we're only telling people come and be saved. And pastors and preachers, stop using the pulpit for the world agenda. Use it for God's agenda. Yes, come out from among them. There are so many delicate people in our pews, in our midst, and now with social media going all over the world, please use the Lord platform for the Lord. Don't use him in vain. Now we should tell people what to do and who to do it for. But let's make sure that the agenda is Jesus, not our wallet, not our cause. Uh, I'm amazed how some people, uh, they ain't trying to tell the White House to promote uh, salvation around the country. You, you, you understand. And uh, so my prayer is uh, we have to live in this democratic community, and I pray that we would always keep it democratic. Um, but let us be prayerful that we don't use the Lord to promote us. That's, that's a better way of saying it. Let's not use the Lord to promote us. Let's use us to promote the Lord. If I be lifted, he'll draw. And you'll ought to see whatever you're doing, if it's not drawing people to Christ, then you're using Christ for you. Um, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. And that's another point. We're going to get ready to get off. We didn't get too far. We got to maybe about the first four commandments. The Sabbath. Uh, we talked about all of the what I call uh, uh, horizontal commandments. Man to God. Um, keep the Sabbath. Um, the Lord rested on the Sabbath. Uh, now, we'll get into that next Wednesday, if Lord's willing. What is, why you go to church on Sunday? Well, it's the first day of the week. Uh, it's the Christian Sabbath. Uh, all things became new when in Christ. And so we don't actually keep the Sabbath under the commandments, which is Saturday. Praise God for our brothers and sisters in the Lord, the seven-day events. Uh, tremendous group and I praise God for they work in the body of Christ and let us remember uh, we might differ in some text but we still found both of us in him and so I tell people learn how to love people it's the greatest thing you can do because that next commandment is the first commandment as Paul said with a promise look what he said uh, it elaborates in death six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In other words, we have a balance in life, working and resting. And I, I learned how to work because that's my parents instilled that in me. Now I have to learn how to rest. I like to cite, recite Psalms 90 and 12. Lord, teach me the number of my days. Uh, you know, the scripture says he give us uh, three scores and ten. And so 70 is a somewhat a timetable for me. I'm planning on making it uh, into my 90s into my hundreds. 124 would be good for me. Don't that look good on me? 124. Lord, don't let my eyes dim like, like Moses. Just keep me there to 124. But whatever the Lord's will, I'm, I'm living uh, like I'm going to live forever and then I'm going to live like I'm going to die today. And so I have this little saying. I learned it from a man by the name of Nelson Nash. He was an insurance man who started a thing called um, an infinite uh, banking concept. And his subject was uh, plan like you're going to live forever and live like you're going to die today. And praise God for his walk with Christ. He touched my life. Um, I want to stop there and say, um, remember the first three uh, or the first four um, in death. It was all about us serving God. And if we can, uh, we'll pick up next Wednesday and talk about the last six, about our walk um, with each other, how to respect each other. And so uh, there's basically three points, reverencing God, rest, 
on the Sabbath and respect others. And that's why I'm praying that you will um, Wednesday respect others who won or lost in the vote because God made us all in his image. God made us all in his image. Pray for one another. I said pray for one another. That's what Jesus asked us to do. So until then, shalom. May the peace of God be with you. And the Lord bless you real good.